beginning, there was a free press. Well, not really, but it sounded good. By the end of the millennium, five men controlled the world's media, and not one of them asked for my permission. Yet there was one man who operated outside their control. He and his motley crew were known as the People's Democratic Republic of Television. Their mission? To bring the people the awful truth. Tonight, from somewhere inside the PDR TV, please welcome Michael Moore! Thank you. Uh, can anybody answer this? Uh, who, who's the president of the United States? Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, okay. And uh, can anybody name the Prime Minister of Great Britain? Tony Blair. Tony Blair, oh, very good. Who do you think runs the world more? Is it governments or corporations? Yeah. Corporations? Yeah. That's definitely, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, then let me just ask you another question then. Who is the president of AT&T? You don't know, do you? Well, I'll, 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 I'll give you an easy, well, this is, this is actually who it is. Let me just show you who it is. This is C. Michael Armstrong, the head of AT&T, okay? All right, I'll, 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 let me, I'll try an easier one. I'll try an easier one. Can anyone here name the CEO, chairman of a Chase Manhattan Bank? Nobody here, huh? Yeah? Yes, we have one. Who said that, sir? Stand, the guy in the stand up, sir. The guy in the tie knew the answer. Yes, Walter V. Shipley. There he is, right there. All right, all right. I'll, I'll make it really, really, really easy on you now. The name of the chairman of General Motors? Roger. Not Roger Smith. Oh, it's this guy, John Smith. John Smith. I just think there's something wrong with the fact that we don't know who these guys are. That's not good. I mean, if we think they're the enemy, shouldn't we at least know their names? Well, I, I thought in order to help us out from now on, starting tonight, we're going to make this an annual thing. We're instituting the Awful Truth Man of the Year Award. And I'd like you to join me in presenting tonight's award. I am proud to announce that the winner of this year's Awful Truth Man of the Year Award is Ira Leon Rennert. That's right. Ira Rennert's Renco Group is the Environmental Protection Agency's certified number one private polluter in America. Mr. Rennert couldn't be here tonight because he's busy polluting on location. As a tribute, however, we are proud to present these highlights from the illustrious career of a quiet man whose impact on America's environment will be felt for generations to come. Brooklyn-born mega-millionaire Ira Rennert's contributions to the pollution business are legendary. His Renko Group of corporations own steel, lead, and magnesium-producing plants that have created environmental problems in fabulous states, including Ohio, Missouri, and the lovely Utah. In fact, during the last year measured, Renko operations released more than 73 million pounds of toxins into the atmosphere. No one would expect a man who loves his waste as much as Ira does to put aside his work when he leaves the office. Ira is building the country's largest home on Long Island, New York, and it is a living monument to his enduring passion for waste. Incredible number of bathrooms. Allegedly, there are 39 bathrooms. 32 bedrooms and 32 bathrooms. Was it 36? Well, that was what we... We're told maybe there's more. He has more bathrooms than any resort out here. He has more everything. Keeping up with the Renards? Better build a few more bathrooms. Ira's new $100 million mansion is a craptacular cornucopia of commodes that he keeps carefully sheltered from the prying eyes of nosy neighbors. Oh, we just want to take a look. This is private property. You are not allowed on the property. If you insist upon staying out of it, we will call the police. Well, gee whiz, that's not too friendly. Gee whiz is right, bud. Ira Rennert has marked his territory from the shores of Long Island, New York, to the shores of Utah's Great Salt Lake. Utah is home to Rennert's Magnesium Corporation of America, the nation's number one air polluting facility, according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. That's right, Ira's number one. But number two is not so bad with him either. 
Reynolds' Utah neighbors think he should take credit for the following achievements, but they can't prove it. Grantsville is the closest city to the MagCor. We smell it, we taste it. I mean, when you're talking pounds of chlorine admitted in the atmosphere, pounds of hydrochloric acid, you have a severe problem. People have canters and there's nine birth defects on one year in this town. There's cows being born, I think right out here, that are born without teeth sometimes. Strange thing. Strange indeed. Let's see what the local barber has to say about MagCor employees. I'll cut the hair and be green from the chlorine. If this plant was to reduce its emissions or to close down, the state of Utah would shift from being in the top 10 of polluters in the United States to top 10 in terms of uh, least pollution. Yes, Ira puts the ick in toxic waste. Here are a few scenes from Ira Rennert's many other wasteful endeavors. His Doe Run Company near St. Louis, Missouri is ranked 37th on the EPA's list of 50 facilities that release the most pollution in America. And the multi-talented WCI Steel Company of Warren, Ohio, may face environmental fines of $20 million. Way to go, Ira. Ira's maniacal commitment to waste extends to automobile exhaust as well. He manufactures the low mileage, high gas consumption Humvee, and Hummer. The favorite, let's pretend we're in the military car of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Come with us now to Ira Renner's humble two-bathroom Park Avenue apartment, where Mike is presenting his richly deserved award. On behalf of Poison People Everywhere, I'd like to present this award to Mr. Renner. Would you like to accept it for him? He's man of the year, and I'd like to present this award to him. You will have to leave. He's man of the year? You will have to leave. Call well, the police, please. Well, well the police are just are standing right there. We just quit. Would you mind having uh, these people in the building? I don't know what they're doing here. We're on a public sidewalk here. We're just trying to present the award, that's all. <laughs> Sir, it's a gift. It's a gift. Crap. Perhaps the bathroom king would accept a more modest award at his Rockefeller Center office. Hello, one minute, please. Okay, thank you. Hi, how you doing? Fine. Um, we have an award here for Mr. Renner. Man of the Year Award, because, I mean, nobody pollutes uh, like Ira Renner. It's the least we can do to thank him. Okay. Is he here right now? No, he's no? not. Uh, we'd like to present it to you on behalf of Mr. Renner. Um, you may want to use these gloves, too, just in case you... There you go. Gee, you're nice. Okay. Accepting for Ira Renner, Joanne! Bye. Bye. Okay, bye. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Man of the Year. I will be on Renner. You are the Awful Truth Man of the Year. Thank you. Thank you. We got a lot more to come, so stick around. The worst thing, though, about this whole past year or two when we had to deal with the impeachment and Monica DeGate and all that is, well, let's see, what is the worst thing? That, I mean, I could listen, I could, there's a whole bunch of worse things. You know, anybody got any ideas here? I mean, what's the thing this year that's really upset you? I mean, what, what is the growth industry that, that's come out of this whole thing here? Any, any suggestions? Geraldo. Mm. <laughs> Geraldo. Yeah, that's right, actually. It has put Geraldo back on the map, you know? <laughs> In this year, it seems like that the worst thing that's come out of the whole Monica Gay thing is the pundit industry. And now they've got like 24-hour networks devoted to just screaming at each other. Have you seen these? MSNBC, Fox News Channel, even CNN now, where they just like yell and yell and yell, and they have all these smarty pants, know-it-alls. If you're loud and dumb, you get to be a pundit on network television. And unfortunately, I got sucked into one of those uh, shows uh, recently on MSNBC with John Gibson, that thing called Internight. You ever seen that? He's the yeller, the guy with the, the blonde hair, you know? And, and he goes, so, Michael Moore, so, what do you think about this conversation between Linda Tripp and Monica Lewinsky? Let me read it to you. 
So then the president dropped his pants and he said, kiss it, kiss it, kiss it. What do you think about that, Michael Moore? Michael Moore, what do you think about that? Kiss it. <laughs> Man, I'm like sitting there in the chair going, Man, people are trying to eat dinner. <laughs> oh, we don't want to be listening to this, right? It's like, it makes our ears bleed, right? Wouldn't we be happy if they would just all shut up and go away, huh? <laughs> I thought you might feel that way. But just to make sure, I thought what we'd do tonight is have what I call the pundit challenge, all right? And what we're going to do here is I've got a, a piece of tape from my favorite ear-bleeding pundit, George Will. And I would like to ask you, the audience, here in Chicago and at home, who would you rather listen to, George Will or one of the following items I'm about to present to you? So just to give you a taste of it, in case you don't know who George Will is, you would have to have not had a television for the last decade or so. Or if you've lived in England, just thank uh, Norman Stone. Uh, please, um, you know, kind of put a little cotton in your ears and, and just listen to this. And what we're going to learn in coming weeks is how many of the 45 are really capable of being tormented. I'm not going to say come over and change, but how many can be moved to the unaccustomed torture of thought? <laughs> oh, man. Now, would you rather listen to that? Or would you rather listen to this? All those in favor of George Will, please applaud. A brave man, sir. And you, there's a prize for you later. All right. Or would you rather listen to The Jackhammer? Well, okay, okay. I think that might be a little too easy for you, all right? So let's try this again. Now, would you rather listen to George Will? The unaccustomed torture of thought. Or this. George Will? Or nails on a blackboard? Oh. George picked up a few more votes that time. Yeah, see, see, liberals will bend just like that. Just, a few nails on a blackboard, no, it's okay, we can change our minds. All right, let's really test your mettle. Would you rather listen to George Will on a Sunday morning? The unaccustomed torture of thought. Or would you rather listen to this? A man with 12 fillings eating aluminum foil. All right! Way to go! You've met the pundit challenge! Now, uh, in this series, we've had a number of things happen to us that have never happened before in anything we've done. Roger and me, TV Nation, the big one. Uh, we actually had our first arrest uh, in this series when Crackers, the corporate crime-fighting chicken, was arrested. <laughs> You remember a few weeks ago, down at Disney World, the, uh, uh, all he wanted to do was to meet the other great animal mascot of our times. Um, we've had our, our, our permits pulled. We had uh, the German consulate, uh, for the first time ever, actually grabbed a, a videotape out of our camera and stole it from us. We've never had anybody take videotape from us. Uh, it's just been one thing after another like that on this show. We've had more police show up 
than ever before to haul us away. And, uh, and this piece that you saw in the first part of the show about Ira Renner uh, led to a number of conflicts in New York City uh, that resulted in something that had never happened to us uh, before. And I'd like to share with you uh, the hell that we went through. Today, Ira Renner, the millionaire industrialist currently building the world's largest house, went to New York State Supreme Court and convinced a judge to issue a restraining order against filmmaker Michael Moore at his show, The Awful Truth. Renner charges that Moore harassed his Park Avenue neighbors and even scaled the walls of his Long Island estate. If Moore comes within 150 feet of Mr. Renner's 39-bathroom house or gets anywhere within 150 feet of Rockefeller Center, where Renner's corporate offices are located, he will be arrested and jailed. Jail? Hey, I was an altar boy and an Eagle Scout, and I've been a law-abiding citizen since I was a child. You can't come within 150 feet of Rockefeller Center. 150 feet away from the door or more. And how do I find out where 150 feet is? Well, I think you better hire someone to do that for you. Meet Chuck, a certified surveyor and the man I entrusted with the solemn task of marking off 150 feet between me and the entrance to Ira Rennert's office. Plus an extra foot, just to be sure. Then I hired my own security guard, Jacob, to make sure I didn't give in to my natural instincts to violate the restraining order. I'm used to being unwelcome in certain places, but this time it was different. Rockefeller Center, an Art Deco marvel consisting of 19 glorious buildings covering 11 acres of Midtown Manhattan. Named after multimillionaire John D. Rockefeller, it's the center of my work and social life. But thanks to Ira Rennert, I'm legally prohibited from doing some of the things I cherish most of all. Rockefeller Center is where every winter I take a poor little girl from the shelter to go ice skating. But I'm an orphan. but not this year. It's where I introduce an innocent child to the sheer magnificent beauty of the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. I can no longer donate thousands of dollars in small, unmarked bills to the Salvation Army. And I can't carry out my sacred duty by confessing my many sins each week at St. Patrick's Cathedral which is also located within restraining order distance of Rockefeller Center. There are other churches round about here, Michael, a few blocks away where you can go and say your prayers. Yeah, but St. Patrick's. I know, St. Patrick's is special. Rockefeller Center is also where I make my daily pre-dawn pilgrimage to NBC's Today Show. Take this and go give it to Matt and Katie from Flint, Michigan. Where are All right? right up the window there. Oh, All yeah, right, thank go. you, my fellow Flint boy. Let Michael in. This restraining order was also affecting my work. I was prohibited from appearing on Late Night with Conan O'Brien to talk about my new show because NBC Studios are in Rennert's building too. Welcome to the show, Michael. Hey, thanks, Conan. I'm glad to be here. Tell us about your latest project. Uh, it's a new show. It's called The Awful Truth. It's on Bravo. It's between the Playboy Channel and the Cartoon Network. And it's on Channel 4 in Great Britain. That sounds exciting. I understand you have a clip. Do you want to set it up? Well, it's, uh, this is me going in someplace to bug somebody. Let's roll that clip. OK. What was it with these companies? Here I was just trying to give them a few bucks. And they give me the boot. Michael Moore, everybody, give him a hand. Okay. Then things got worse. The mayor got involved, which I found shocking, considering the positive publicity I've given him on this show. It's a temporary restraining order issued by a court because Mr. Moore has allegedly had allegedly broken into Mr. Rennert's house. Broke into his house? <laughs> oh, okay. First I scaled his walls, then I broke into his house. Folks, the Hamptons house isn't even built, and you saw me at Rennert's apartment, and you've seen what I look like. Uh, the only thing I can scale is the arm of my lazy boy. He's man of the year. Anyway, the mayor yanked my film permits, effectively shutting down production of my show. I decided I wasn't going to stand behind the velvet rope anymore. I went and got myself a high-powered, sweet-smelling First Amendment lawyer and went on the offense. That temporary restraining order that prohibits us from getting near Ira Renner 
was obtained uh, by the submission of false and uh, fraudulent uh, affidavits. We certainly will draw that to the attention of the court on the return date next Tuesday morning. As soon as the mayor heard that, he caved in. I have no objection to Mr. Moore filming or not filming. Then we proved the bathroom king had filed false affidavits with the court. Before the judge could throw the book at him, he turned tail and ran. Millionaire Ira Rennert's lawsuit against director Michael Moore was dismissed today, as was a restraining order that prohibited the director from coming within 150 feet of the industrialist. You're free to go. The restraining orders are lifted. It's a ritual. Michael Moore. This is, the, uh, this is the actual restraining order uh, issued uh, by the judge in the United States of America. Part of our media, our free press, was uh, prohibited uh, from taking There it is. You can see it up there. I was just thinking backstage what we should do is burn it right now here in Chicago. Um, right? Should we burn this? Yeah. <laughs> We've got a lawyer. Who, want, who wants to burn it? Uh, you're you're going to burn it? Okay. All right. Oh, you can come. Sir, you come too. All right. Well, it's a double burning. Wait, 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 we better do this. Can we do this? We're in the school here. Can we, we got a waste basket or something or? Huh? Yeah, yeah, bring that up. That's good, that's good. Okay, here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna. All right, here we go, here we go. You guys got a lighters or? So you smoke, right? Uh, okay, here we go, here we go. The burning of the restraining order. for showing up here tonight, and we'll see you next week on The Awful Truth. Thank you very much. Thank you. Accustomed torture of thought.